I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. In this video, I'll be showing you how to outline the uppercase letter W. All the letters of the alphabet are in my ebooks, quilling uppercase and lowercase letters. Visit my blog to download a free template of the letter A and give it a try. The links are in the notes below this video. I'm going to put it onto a cream cardstock that's five and a half inches, which is going to be glued to a cardstock that's six inches in square. So it's just gonna have a nice little border around it. And the paper that I'm using for the green is called Recollections Cartelina. And because I already started cutting this sheet and I wanted to have exact matching green to outline it with, I just happened to cut some strips out of that same stock that's a quarter inch wide. So it's just going to all go when I outline the W. And this is just a simple drawing of some leaves that I decided to decorate my monogram with. And maybe this will give you some ideas when you're making a gift card for someone that you love. Now I've already traced my letter W onto my cream cardstock, and if you watch some of my earlier videos, you can see how I go about doing that. I'll also leave a link in the notes below. Okay, I've taken my two strips and I've folded where I've indicated where to score, just following the outline to figure out which direction to make your folds. And just one thing to keep in mind when you're making these folds is to make sure that you do them in 90 degrees. So how do you make sure of that? Basically, when I go to fold these two strips, I make sure by touching these two fingers to the, these two edges before I crimp sharply there, that makes sure that that's 90 degrees. If you don't make sure that this is aligned, and I'm just going to exaggerate here, but if it was a little bit off before you do your crimp, then that's going to make gluing it to your work surface a little more challenging. So I've got these two strips ready to go onto my cardstock, and whenever I start a letter, I take a look at where are the most challenges that you can find here. So I tend to try to align things that have straight edges, and because there's three here and two here, I'm going to consider this the greater of the two challenges. So to tackle that and make sure they're all on the same page here, no pun intended, I am going to put a stiff card onto my cardstock here and I've got some removable tape here to basically act as a ruler. This way when I go to align all these edges, they're going to butt up against this card and make sure they're all flush because the human eye, you're going to be able to see if it's a little bit off like this. It just, you know, makes your job a little harder. And I like to make things pretty easy. So I'm going to turn it upside down just so that this work surface is closer to me. So I'm just going to lead down some glue. I'm going to use Aline's Original Tacky Glue. So I'm just going to apply glue just on this segment here. So I'm going to strategically dip in my smeared glue puddle. And if you're curious why I smear my glue puddle, you can watch my other video that talks about glue. Okay, and I've got my smeared glue puddle on a thin plastic card like this, and that makes it easier for me when I want to maneuver it closer to my work. Again, I'm just going to dip strategically and just coat just that small segment so that when I glue it to my work surface, what I'm looking to do is secure these areas here and that leaves this free to for me to deal with later and lift and dip and lift and dip so i've got all that coat coated on the bottom here and i'm just going to pull it taut as i place it onto my cardstock it's just a gentle tug this way so that you know your strips are nice and straight. If you don't give it just a gentle tug, it can just be a little bit soft. Now in this case, because my join is going to be here, 
I'm going to place this guy in place first and then that way you know this guy has somewhere to align to okay now this guy's in the way so it's not a big deal we'll just bend him out of the way because it's a corner and you can see this is coming in handy now because this edge won't be going too far this way, won't be going too far this way. It's going to align right here and this pinky here is going to hold it down as I place the rest of the strip. So I've smeared my glue pedal on this part of my card to make it easier for me as I lift and dip. And hopefully your your puddle is going to be long enough, unlike mine. Okay, and lift as you pull that out of the way. And then if you want to, actually, I just kind of leave it here to make sure I don't get the glue smeared onto my card. So I'm going to place this corner first. And with my pinky holding it there, well, kind of have eight arms at this point. I'm going to lift that up. So my pinky is holding it here and I'm just going to pull to the right just gently just to make it snug and taut. Okay now I can remove my ruler because its job is done and I'm going to apply it to the bottom part of the letter now. Okay, so I'm just going to lift and dip right there. Now in this case, it's hard for me to dip this part like that. That's why it was good that I tackled these parts first. So we're just going to have to make do with what, what we can reach. And I'm going to suggest that you do both at the same time if you can, because it's going to be hard to get in there afterwards. And you know what? This guy's kind of in the way, unfortunately. So I'm just going to remove him just so I can get access to the glue better. There's no hard, fast rule on any of this. So, you know, whatever actually feels comfortable for you. So I'm just going to dip in that area and So I want to dip and then just kind of quickly bring back my ruler now. And again pulling it taut. And I find you know, if you haven't pressed down on your work surface, you could actually have quite a bit of leeway to adjust as you need. Somewhat, to some degree anyway. There is some forgiveness, it's not written in stone. And it looks like I didn't quite get enough glue on there. So I'm going to show you what I tend to do when I don't have glue all the way like that. I just kind of smear some on a strip. And I'm just going to, with my tweezers, lift this loose area up. Maybe I was too slow in applying it. And 
and not bad okay that's all right okay now for the last strip i'm just going to dip it in a new puddle of glue when it's all coated we'll just do that last bit in place so i've got my ruler there to make sure that my strip is aligned on the edges and i'm just using yet another piece of plastic here just to give that straightness Okay, now that our outline is done, we're just going to glue those corners together. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of glue. And do you see how glue is only on one half of my needle? On the clean half, I'm going to use it to push aside the paper as I run the glue up the other edge. And then I'm going to come back and bring the side of my needle up along those two edges just to make them kiss and join up forever. Okay, now we're on to the filling of the letter W. And I know I showed this drawing of the W as I was doing the outline, and I didn't mean to tease you, but I just want to show you this is how much it can change from my initial concepts and to the actual thing. As I was doing the leaves, I kind of realized, oh, this is taking me a while and you know so i decided i'm just going to change things up by adding a lot more sushi bits and all these elements are not glued down i did that on purpose because i want to show you different ways to assemble your work i've done plenty of videos uh, on other letters you're welcome to look at some of those i'll leave some links in the show notes below this video and I just wanted to point out a few things. So for this swoosh here, when I go to glue, I'm going to, you know, dab to my work surface, but also I'm going to add a little bit of glue right to that part. And when I go to slide it in place, what I tend to do is grip with my tweezers and I tend to use the other flat one. Where is that? So I tend to use this guy because he's got a little wider nose than this one and you see how these two edges come together that's completely different from these two more like pinchers coming together so this comes to a fine point which I love but this also I love because it comes to a flat grip so when I go to bring that dot of glue together to the edge of the W I'm going to you know basically really give it a good solid pinch so that's how I would assemble things like that. And for, say, when I'm joining this, this curve here to this one, if you look carefully, what I've done is I've torn this edge. And I find that, especially with paper this thick, it's quite noticeable if you were to use scissors to cut that blunt edge. It just, you know, I guess, <laughs> I guess when you look at it that closely. Not everyone has to do that. Um, I just find that a, a torn edge will be more smooth for the eye to look at that as a continuous kind of curve. So then on to the leaves. So I've got two styles going on here. I used this little curvy kind of leaf for the lighter sushi version because I had imagined viney kind of you know leaves and I wanted to set that apart from this kind of leaf which is more tapered and fine but even though these two leaves look quite different they're actually quite similar and I'll show you in a bit more detail in a second here but I just want to show you they're actually very similar and the way I you know even apply or plan to glue them on here is this one I'm going to offset this one I did opposing because nature has both and it really does depend on what you want to convey I just want to show two different kind of leaves in the same project and show that it can still live in harmony okay so let's talk about the leaves here so it's actually the same length on either side so 
So I just take a strip and soften the strip and just arbitrarily fold. I didn't actually make any measurements. So as you see here, this leaf is a little longer. So as I went, I just went a little bit smaller each time. And it just gives your eye a bit of motion, a sense of progression as it comes to the end of the little, little sprig here. So after I folded, then I would cut along where that edge is. And then you would have this beginning of a leaf and they're the same length. So if you just put a little stream of glue on a piece of plastic and just dip that in and bring those two edges together. So that's how we get these tapered leaves. Now to add this little swoosh right there, all I did to do that was to take a crochet hook and on the edge here where it's folded, not the joined side, because this part here is stronger right now, I'm just going to curl that little bit right around my crochet hook. And that's how I get that little added jaunt right there. So that's how you get two different kinds of leaves. Now when it comes to composition, I always try to make everything really different, even from itself, even though we're talking about quite similar elements. So what do I mean by that? This twig here is the same as that twig here, same kind of leaf structure, that kind of thing. But in this case, there's two opposing leaves. And in this case, I'm just showing one leaf on, or, you know, like basically one leaf on one side. And I've got two little offshoots here. In this case, I've got three. I want to give as much structural integrity to this part of the corner here so I'm leading it all the way up and I'm going to be joining a little dot of glue on the edges here just to give it that strength just to you know make it not just be just the corner on its own and then when it comes to the swooshy bits I've got a large one coming down here so I'm trying to change up the the large size of this and compare it to a smaller size when you have everything all about the same it starts to get a bit too even all around so I try to change it up where I can I want the eye to come down on the letter W and come back up it gives the whole item movement this way and then same with you know the amount of swoosh so I've only got one swoosh here I've got two going on here and you know, just kind of play with those elements before you actually do the gluing down of those pieces. And it's going to bring your piece come alive with movement and you don't need to explain that. Your eye just kind of feels that. Okay, good luck with your quilling and let me know how it goes for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up or even better, leave me a comment. I love knowing which tip you enjoyed most or how it's helped you in your quilling. Hearing your enthusiasm is what gives me energy. I'd also love to see your work, so tag me in your photos. 